Hi guys, Chad Schroffkribben here. Welcome back to the Steve and the Alien tutorial series. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on the shot where Steve drops his hamburger, which then leads to the events where he goes off-road, and then the alien eventually overcomes the van. So to get started, we need to first open up the existing file we made when he is eating the hamburger and driving. And once you've done that, go to File, save as, and name this file differently. That way you'll have the original, and then you'll have this new animation, which will be animating momentarily. So once you've done that, we need to do a couple of things now to prepare the document. First, let's get rid of all the animation dealing with Steve and the camera. So go ahead and click on the Steve layer, which will probably have a bunch of keyframes already from the previous project, and then go to animation, clear animation from layer, and then click yes. Now we need to do the same for the camera. You'll notice on the timeline we have the camera icon with some keyframes in place. All we have to do for this is just highlight all of those keyframes and then hit the delete button. So now that is deleted. And if we page through here, the only thing we have moving right now is the background, which is fine because we still want that background to move. And we can adjust now the camera and everything else to our own specifications for this particular shot. So now let's focus on the hamburger because we're gonna do some changes to that and then we can move forward with the animation. So first, go into the Steve layer and click on the hamburger switch layer. And then you'll notice that the hamburger is, of course, down here. We don't want the hamburger linked to his hand any longer because we're now going to put it in his mouth. He'll be holding on to the hamburger with his mouth and then he will spit it out when the turbulence gets too rough. So we'll click on the bind layer tool and select the head for the hamburger switch layer instead this time. Now we can go down here and let's actually hide everything except the Steve character so we can kind of see what's going on here. We'll go down to the hamburger and we can now bring it up and I can rotate it like this. Like that. And we're going to want Steve to hold it in his mouth. So we can right click on the mouth switch layer and choose the teeth grab layer. And we can then move the hamburger like this. Now you might have a couple of issues with this because the hamburger is a bit big. Um, so what we could do is make a new switch instance for this and shrink the front part of the hamburger even more than it is right now. So let's go ahead and just do that really quick. We can go to the burger switch layer and click on the burger bit layer and then click duplicate layer. And we can just name it burger bit two. And then come in here and grab the add point tool. And then we can just bring everything down. Yeah, we can put the bun down a little bit too if we wish, but I'll actually just try to squish everything down. Oops. Like that. And then I can move the seeds in like this. Okay, and then we need the bottom part. like that. Okay. 
So that looks pretty good. It looks like he's holding on to it and it's between his teeth. And that is what we want. So we have that set up. We can also adjust his eyes really quick. We can just go to the eye switch and choose eyes open as well as switch the pupils on. So now it looks like he's actually looking. Okay, now let's advance to frame one. And I can bring back my environment here. On frame one, we're gonna want his hand on the steering wheel. So I'll come down here and click on my Steve layer and then choose the manipulate bones tool and just bring up the hand like that. And I'll bring up this hand a little bit too because I'm essentially gonna have him reach for the hamburger and then he's gonna hit a bump in the road which is gonna cause him to uh, lose control of the hamburger. He's gonna spit it out, whichever. So let's go to about frame or one second in, frame 24. And I'll have him reach down or reach up rather, move his head down and then reach up to grab the hamburger. And then he's gonna hit a bump, which will cause him to jar forward. So at about frame 28 or 29, we will move him in like this and make sure the hand is still positioned on the steering wheel and then snap the head a little bit forward like that and then the hand can go like this and I noticed I forgot to put my keyframes down for um, this for frame 24 I forgot to put keyframes from my bones it's always important so I'm just gonna move this back really quick so this all works how I need it to there we go and then he leans forward like that okay and then he's gonna snap back so about frame 36 we'll have him snap back so I'll tip, tilt the torso go like that and by this time the hand will be right here and then we'll put him back to the neutral position at about two seconds in. So he goes right there, like that. Then we can put the hand down like that. Okay, so now we'll, we'll need the hamburger to um, go away from the mouth when all this happens. So at about frame 24, when the jarring situation occurs, we will Right click on the mouth switch and choose an open mouth. And then come up here to the burger. So on the burger layer, we will create some keyframes on frame 24 for the translate layer and the rotate layer options. And then he goes flying forward like this. And I would say about five frames in, we can have the burger then just kind of drop out of his mouth. And I can just rotate it and move it like this. So it drops like that, and he's gonna go flying back like that. And as we can see, the burger, since it's linked to the head, will still kind of come up after the fact. So at frame 30, once it's off screen, I can double click on that burger layer, choose allow animated layer effects, and then click visible to deselect that and click okay. So now it's invisible, and it doesn't matter if it flies up or not. So, also with the switch layers, when we hit frame 24, we can also switch the eyes to shut because the impact is so great that he squints. So let's just right click on the pupils on frame 24 and go to no pupils and right click on the eye switch and close them. And then maybe about here, he can open his eyes again. And also we can do something with the mouth. So he spits it out. And then maybe about here, we can right click and choose the teeth instance. So hits. And then at about here, he can close the mouth. Now, from this point on, he's gonna be driving the car and we're gonna have him look 
down and then up and down and up and then finally decide to go for the hamburger. So starting at about frame two, let's first have him when his eyes are shut. We can create a keyframe for the pupils when they come back and just before. So right here, we can have him, his eyes switch like this. So his eyes are shut and then he comes back and then he looks like that. And then we'll have him start looking down and then up and then down and up and then he just reaches down. So starting about frame 54, we'll add a keyframe and we'll go to frame 60 and have him look down and then go for a few frames and then have him look up. And then down, add a keyframe and then up. And then add a keyframe and then he'll look down as well as um, lean down essentially. So we kind of have this whole thing going on. And then he's gonna go down. Okay, so now let's add some head movements corresponding with this. So about frame 54, I'll add in a keyframe on the Steve bone layer by just clicking on my manipulate bones tool. I can nudge his head up like this, just a little bit like that. And I can move his hand as well because he's probably gonna still be controlling that vehicle, of course. So now he looks down. So at about frame 60, we can just move his head down like that. And of course, as this is going on, I'll move his arm up like that. Okay, and then at about frame 68, he's gonna look back up. So I'll create a keyframe just by clicking on the head and then he looks up. So then I'll kind of go back up like that. And then right here, we're gonna create another keyframe just before he looks down again. And he's gonna look down. Of course, he moves his head down. And then right here, we'll create another keyframe and then have him look up. And then right here, another keyframe. And then this is when he goes down entirely. So he'll, of course, look down, but we'll also have his body go down. So at about um, 105 as well, we'll click on the body layer. And then we'll actually kind of move him down like this. And also we can insert a keyframe for the translate layer tool at 105. And then when he goes down, we can just move him over like this a bit. Okay. And we might need to adjust some things here too, like this so that he isn't completely intersecting with the steering wheel. I can go like that. Okay. And I can probably advance these frames over a bit because it kind of goes kind of quick. So like that. Okay, let's go back now and just do a few more things. Like we'll continue the hand motion for the steering wheel because it stops right about here. So I'll just take the manipulate bones tool and go down like that and up. And then we have him reach down right about here. So maybe he can bring his hand up and then he just kind of goes down like that. Okay. There we go. And finally, we can add in some camera movements for of course, when we do the jar as well as just the um, bumpiness of the road. So going back here to frame one, we'll take the camera pan tool and just click to create a keyframe. And then we'll just go to frame 12 and have a little smoothness like this. And then all of a sudden, at about frame 24, we're gonna have the jarring hit. So probably like this. 
and then like that, and then like this, and that. So then it's, he's driving us and boom, he looks and he lost his hamburger and he can keeps looking down now and then we'll just resume with this, the usual bumpiness of the road. Okay, and one more time, I can just play this out. Just like that. And we might need to even slow his um, grab animation even more. I can just move him up a few frames and then just extend the animation out to about 132 to compensate for that. Just to give us a little bit of more leeway and then I can just move the camera pan up to that 132 mark so, so we have camera movement up to that point. So then one more time. Okay, that will do it. Once you're done, just go to File and Save to save your animation. And of course, File Export Animation to make it a video and then you can put all your settings in, save the video in your folder so that we can bring it into the editing software later on. And of course, make sure you view your video to make sure it looks good because you can always make tweaks just by going back in, tweaking and exporting your video again. Anyway, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.